Hello, and welcome to this interview with Trisha Miho, one of our artists presently on display at the Alpha Art Gallery's current exhibition, Shifted Nature. We'll be going over some of her artistic process, as well as the pieces that she graciously contributed to the exhibition. And we'll start off pretty simple. How are you doing today? Very well, very well. Thank you for this opportunity. And um, let's start. <laughs> yeah, so let's go into your history first because you do identify as a self-taught artist. So how did you teach yourself to be an artist? Well, first of all, my inclination in the arts started in the music. Um, in kindergarten, um, I was showing the interest to um, play an instrument and was the piano. So very early, I started to have a formal education in music and piano, and which took me to the bachelor's in, mu in music. At the same time, I started an early, early kid as well, showing interest in drawing, painting. So my mother um, um, sent me to a private school and to, you know, to have some basic uh, skills and see what happens if I was, you know, having any interest in continuing my education in that area. And I did. And I didn't stop until we are talking now. <laughs> um, so what I, my idea was to have a formal education in another disciplines, not in the arts. I, I felt that I have uh, certain skills that I needed to sharp, to be sharpened. And uh, so I have attended different um, workshops uh, for uh, in Argentina for different um, major painters uh, school uh, to international level, not just locally in Argentina. And is there when I also went to uh, Bellas Artes, which is the School of Arts, as and um, my interest in taking sketches of uh, very quick in five minutes, three minutes, two minutes of live nature or uh, nudes in the workshop. And um, I remember at the time that I needed the permission of my parents because they didn't allow underage. And um, so after my routine of school every day, I attended these uh, nights uh, taking my sketches and um, uh, helped me a lot, of course, visually and to be in the environment of the artist, very young, as I said, underage. And from there, formally, I have started my career in this discipline. But at the same token, um, I made a decision to don't have a formal education going to the School of Arts. And instead, I was inclined to do my career, a bachelor's and then the master's in law and social sciences. And, but I have a parallel, I would say, uh, inclination to keep the both uh, uh, lifestyles uh, so far until the present time. In addition to kind of some of the art that we see here with photography, you also have experience with graphic design. Do you feel that that informs your process as an artist? Absolutely, yes, because um, for example, attending the workshops, I was able to to practice and learn certain drawing um, techniques that were European ones, as I learned from this, um, this school of uh, artists, and that can take you into a different school, like the surrealism, and uh, projecting lines uh, without having any um, preconcept in mind to the outcome. So that was a big portal for me to explore that line. Of, uh, of drawing that then took me to the uh, painting and um, even sometimes I wanted to project into my into sculpture sometime. But that was one inclination. The other inclination was to be in the graphic arts, to have a different view of the, let's say the pop art. And um, 
I was explaining that and I got my degree. And in some of my work, you can see that inclination uh, of the graphic um, designer part of it. So um, that's what the, the way that I was, um, you know, traveling in this um, study of the arts until the present time. Now, when we're talking about your photography specifically, since you are schooled in many other disciplines, what do you do specifically with photography? Like what techniques do you apply um, that really you mostly use for your photographs? Right, I do not consider myself a uh, photographer, absolutely not. And, and I'm not interested to walk into that lead. But um, going back to my young years as a teenager, I remember a gift from my father to put me in my hands, a very sophisticated camera at the time. Um, so I started to use it to explore, right? And, but I didn't, again, uh, maybe I didn't have that clear at the time, but I didn't want to have the effects of the good photographer techniques. I wanted to capture composition, composition about forms and colors without really caring about the technology of the camera. And um, so I realized that I was using another medium, like um, I used in using watercolors, or using um, oil or a mixed media. And um, that's the first start for me in uh, relating to the camera. Uh, in these last uh, 15, 10 years, I went back to that uh, route using um, a camera. But again, to take it as the starting point to then develop some creation about using manipulation after the photograph with uh, software or even created some uh, a scene like the one I'm presenting today in creating a subject and a series from there to explore certain um, subject matters in this case about the nature. This goes well because can you go into a little bit more of your themes with your works since it does center on the woods? Yeah, and uh, related to woods is um, everything is started pretty much, I would say, with the pandemic to look into the nature and um, preserve that isolation that um, all of us, we were uh, drawn into starting last year in, in March. And I live in an area very close to here on the top of the mountain that we have a reservation and um, the nature really uh, made a big impact uh, to me in exploring to capture um, very closely um, what is out there. And is when I'm starting to with the series of the um, uh, in the woods. And uh, you can see all the different views that I have in a surreal way, not in the natural way of the eyes of uh, everybody, but just on my own and trying to make a connection of my paintings and drawing into this other form of expressing with a camera to start with. Going more specifically at the works in the series, uh, let's start with wood installation. What was your motivation behind that? We'll see in, um, the nature as um, a scenery of the starting of this civilization and starting to construct, even using the elements of the nature, um, the first theme of these wood series was a construction of different branches that um, took to me uh, a relation to one of my paintings I have done some years back in going back to the roots of the civilization. So I started building up those uh, themes and moving to use elements of the um, common day life, incorporating that in the nature. And um, then with another of the series, I have been using some mani more manipulation 
uh, with the software um, to look like like a collage, uh, but never creating using the software to overlap different figures. Everything what you see there on this uh, photograph are implanted by me, or created by me, other than the nature, of course. But that's the way that I envision this particular series. Now, with Woods 15 and 16, they both appear to be the same subject, but they have very different color palettes. Can you talk about how the works are related, if they're related, um, and kind of maybe some of your methodology behind them? Sure. First of all, as uh, you said, I put it numbers instead of um, using a, a title. So um, to do not distract the subject or the colors, what I wanted to focus in um, with names. So I was um, running with different versions of colors of variants um, of the same subject with different colors. Um, that I was trying to resemble looking at that subject through different modes or different times of the day. You kind of touched on this before, but you've used a few collage qualities in your work and deer is a very good example of that. Can you talk about how you ended up composing this image? Yeah, first of all, this was in the same area. I was uh, three years while I was driving. I stopped and I found very interesting the composition of the three uh, of them together. Uh, the background has nothing to do what the, uh, the outcome of the photograph is. And um, I need to start creating some collage to these guys, um, a building or a house or something. Something that looks like real. That was not what I was uh, meant to show. So, in using these three animals, I started to start building up that collage in the in the background, and um, also applied some um, diminishing the daylight that was originally on the photograph, which came up very much appealing to me um, with that obscurity and trying to discover the forms and um, some designs um, in geo, uh, geometric um, drawings uh, was really a good combination with the real nature. Woods 25 has this haunting quality to it, largely because it has this soft low light and a lot of dark colored tones. Um, can you talk about how you took this shot and what you did to have this outcome? Yeah, sure. This was a path um, in a very, very light uh, path with a lot of uh, filtering of uh, daylight. And um, I said, I need to emphasize the richness of the branches um and give some more climate to that area so i start putting more darkness um in the colors to show that intricate of the um branches in the picture and then just leave a touch of the lighting to the side just to create more um more intense um you know, imagination to go through that light path at the very side end to the picture. Now, of all your works, which is your favorite or which do you have a particular attachment to? And if you don't have a favorite, is there a piece that you want to take some time to detail? Yeah, actually it will be the one with the face of a, of a woman to the side. Um, that is the best, I was say, to my recollection of the, that can explain the collage effect on the photograph. And um, I like it very much, the um, overlapping of those branches. Uh, the original picture uh, has nothing to do with that view. And um, the richness of the colors mix it in or interfacing with the face of the woman on the picture uh, came out really, really interesting to me. 
um, as the final result. How has COVID-19 and the pandemic um, reshaped your process, if at all, and how has it impacted your work? I know you touched on this a little bit. Yes, I did. Actually, it's the isolation part of it. I think that was the major ingredient to do that uh, retrospect of your view around your life in isolation. Um, especially when you, even you go in nature, you don't see anybody around. And if you go today, you can see that traffic of um, people discovering or more walking around. But in those days, uh, even was nobody, nobody on the streets, nobody circulating. Um, but that rediscovery of the nature for me was um, created a big impact uh, on this series. Well, thank you very much, Tricia. I do not have any more questions. However, if there's anything else you'd like to add that you thought of during the interview, um, ways to reach you, what you're working on in the future, um, any shows that you might be in, feel free to share. Absolutely. I am preparing for a show in a festival in Greece uh, that is taking place um, every summer um, in Crete. And um, this will be another photograph. But um, everybody who ha have access to this um, interview can see my page in Facebook. Uh, and also I have a website uh, where you can see all my trajectory there with uh, all the different uh, mediums that I have been using so far in paintings, like the one I have in the background, and uh, photographs, drawings, pretty much there, and uh, different reviews that I, I received from uh, New York Times and overseas uh, in the past. And still working for now, keep doing it in the series of the uh, of the woods and also parallel um, I'm still working on some paintings uh, for a future solo event um, hopefully in New York well once again Trisha thank you so much for speaking with us and sharing your insight on your creations if you would like to hear more about Trisha and about the Alpha Art Gallery, feel free to look in the description and follow the links to her page, our pages, etc. cetera. Um, and thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs>